Thank you, Raycon, for the money thing. Yes. Okay, so question for y'all. Would you consider yourself an empathetic person? Like on a scale of one to 10, how empathetic would you consider yourself? Uh, For me, if five is average, I'd say I was about a five. Like I'd passingly feel bad for someone out on the street, but by default, if they ask me for money 50% of the time, I'm lying about having any. But it's okay, I, I know I suck. Now that wasn't always true though. I was to be a lot more empathetic of a guy, particularly much smaller guy. Uh, both in height and capacity to hold my pee. But what I could hold was someone else's feelings in my heart. Was that bad? That was bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now, on paper, small Kurt sounds like the better me. Like, would you rather be homeless around this guy or the guy who cried whenever Barney ended? I love you. Yo, that's I still hit, dog. But I think as an adult, something I do better than him, aside from like holding my pee is knowing how to turn the empathy off how to detach per se like i want to feel bad for the homeless man too but i had an ice sandwich for dinner last night i am one more late electricity bill away from being out there on the curb with you homie like if you want less people stealing stuff out of the trash you're gonna let me turn this switch off i <laughs> So naturally the question, aside from how ice sandwiches work, is what happened? Yeah, uh, yeah. Your boy can think of two instances that are the reason that I can now border sociopath at will. One is a fun, quirky story involving a wacky doctor and nuts. And the other is a deep, dark spiral of despair I went down that made me confront death in my understanding of it. This one's about the nuts. All right, so unlike the rest of y'all, I got my first job in middle school. Like my first real payday proper job, which fun fact uh, is a crime. There's nothing to do with the arc of the story, by the way, it's just a fun fact, it was a crime. Okay, anyway, the whole gist of it is it let kids figure out what they wanted to do by actually doing it. So in truth, this crime was better than the most colleges and the place i applied to work for was a vet's office it's like one of those jobs that every 12 year old puts along with astronaut and president and i did because well i i loved animals and still do not past tense so i got right to work and may i just say this was like one of the funnest crimes i ever committed it was a pretty small modest place and there were a couple people there that i worked under now there was a rotation of nurses working there but on the days i was there i worked under this one we'll call nurse m a real sweetheart who made me realize why people might have nurse fantasies as well as her complete opposite and the owner of the practice who we'll call dr m he was really just this old ass man who did things how we felt and i could never really get a read on him like like think like one of those smiley characters in anime that actually are like some of the most heartless people but you can't really tell because i got this goofy ass grin like, i honestly couldn't tell if he like cared or didn't like he'd look at you and you wouldn't know if he liked you or if he was imagining you dying like do you want to give me some candy or do you want to give me some candy like what, what what's going on bro be straight with me it was weird people are weird i was 12 i couldn't read faces like that back then honestly i probably still couldn't today anyways days of the shot were fairly normal i'd wash animals clip their nails give them medicine when they were sick you know doctor things and it felt good i was generally helping with something i liked a lot but the thing is that i had a really high attachment and empathy to everything that came in which i mean like come on we're talking about the dude who cries at the barney outros we're still and besides have you ever seen a dog it's a small barney with fur like it's a done deal so i thought the internship was going to be a breeze boy which as you know is the prompt for me to say i was going to learn much different very soon so one day at the office a couple walks in with a small little pup. Like the cutest thing you've ever seen. He was the boyest of boys. So the doctor takes the pup and takes him to one of the back rooms where the surgical equipment was kept. Now your boy wasn't really sure what we were doing. Like I doubt I'm gonna need surgery equipment to wash a dog, you know? So naturally I asked Dr. M, Yo, uh, what we got going on the table today? Bruh. Homeboy grimaces at me like a super villain and says, Kurt, have you ever heard of a neutering. I, uh, I'm gonna keep it a buck 50 with y'all. I only kind of knew what a neutering was. Like I'd seen the prices, right? Like all like, you your pets paid a new, but like the actuality of it was not 100% on the logistics. Little did I know we were going to be uh severing off their um jewels, their um doctor stones, their peanuts, if you will. Your boy was gonna go from washing cages 
to castration. What a jump. Now, this is the part of the video where Senny, my artist, will be questioning everything about what she's doing and why she's working with me. Okay, cool. Hope you're ready. So me, Dr. M, and Nurse M walk into the surgical room. Now, I'm expecting to just kind of watch this whole thing. You know, there's a nurse here. You got the doc here. Like, it, that's, that's how it should go. At least you think so. So as we're starting up, Dr. M looks at me and says, mm, Kurt, why don't you hold him down for me? Um... Sir, you got a whole nurse here, a whole practitioner nurse here, and you're gonna make the 12 year old hold the dog down? All right, man. I don't know, as soon as he saw that initial tinge of me feeling a little weirded out, I think that prompted him to make me get more involved. So I walk over and I hold the dog down and he's kind of resisting, like most things would when you're about to chop off the nut. So I hold him and anyways, Dr. M looks in his mouth. Then he has me grab the dog by the top of the mouth and kind of force it open. Then he takes this disgustingly long tool and shoves it down the dog's throat. <sighs> now, this made me so uncomfortable. Having to pull the dog's jaw back as he put this long thing down his throat, it made me so... Uh, I mean, I could feel the dog's uncertainty. I mean, I could feel anyone's uncertainty. Who wants that long thing down their throat? Ayo, chill, bro, relax. But I'm gonna stick with it. I'm trying to be a vet. I guess this is what vets do. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not really feeling it like that much anymore, but hey, I will stick this out and it's definitely gonna get worse. Now, this next section involves particular details that aren't allowed on youtube.com. So from here on out, I'm gonna need you to use your imagination. So Dr. K goes to his tools and picks out this small metal knife, a scalpel, I believe. And while I'm holding homeboy down, he, slits open his um his bag of beans i see this happen like with my own two 12 year old eyes and i am not feeling well bro seeing that I, like i was already a bit squirmy but to see someone slice open a berry sack is not something i thought would be happening at the age of 12 you know like at 12 most people are throwing balls around and over here, I'm cutting them open. Now, Nurse M kind of sees this, but she's not the really speak up type. Like I could tell she was thinking, man, maybe I should take over. Girl, I appreciate you so much. But she was too nervous to say anything. But it was okay, because I thought I had to do this. And to do this, you're gonna have to chop open a couple <sighs> berry holders, man. <laughs> Next, I see Dr. K pull out a tiny pair of scissors. Yo, we all know what's about to happen with those. Like, I dead ass start shaking. Like, he's gonna use them on me. Like, you ever see a doctor holding a needle and you can feel the pain right before he puts it in? I was like that, except the needle was scissors and the skin was a dog's family jewels. Ah. Dr. M pulls in closer to the no-no zone. I see him bring the scissors down slowly and then No, no, no. I know a lot of y'all know like what pain empathy is, right? Like you ever see someone like fall down on TV and you feel it yourself? Like, yo, imagine seeing someone snip someone's jewels in real life and then being 12. Now at this point, both of them notice that I am invisible pain. And again, I'm 12. So you'd think, man, we should get the 12 year old out of here. Maybe have him wash some more dogs. Nah, he just keeps going. Nurse M is kind of in shock too. All of us still moderately silent. Me heavy sweating like now my stomach is hurting like i'm kind of keeling over but we kept going and eventually it was over like i don't know why this shook me so much but i don't know i just couldn't get the idea out of my head like that poor dog how are we doing this to dogs <laughs> it was pretty clear that from the look of it i wasn't feeling this and dr m noticed and did this Dr. M picks up one of the jewels that he has freshly snipped and arches it up in one of his hands. I think to myself, what is going on? Dr. M looks at me and says, Hey, Kurt, watch this. He then puts his other hand up next to it at a perpendicular angle, like a basketball player. I wasn't confused anymore. It was all too clear. At the end of the room was a metal trash can nurse m knew what it was too i could see the shock on her face that trash can was right in his eye line we don't know why but we knew what was gonna happen next from his hands they flew so gracefully yet so disgusting the only thing i could think was why god why god why 
I then heard one sound that hurt more than anything I would have done that day. What the fuck? Theatrics aside, in case you're confused of what just happened, homeboy just shot nuts into trash can. Some of y'all gonna think I'm lying, which is fair and understandable, okay? But I saw what I saw, and I felt what I felt. <laughs> if y'all thought I had empathy before, man, I was at a loss, at a loss. Like the pain I felt was immeasurable. <laughs> Bro, why, why? Dr. M is laughing his ass off. I am now convinced his smile was always stab me smile. Cause that dog's pain, I could feel it. Like, yo, that ding it made at the bottom of the trash can rang and grated through my mind and my stomach. This can't be how we dispose of waste. Like there's gotta be like some safety bag or something. Like, what was that? I thought you practiced medicine, not basketball, bro. But then he stopped laughing and he turned to me. He kind of looked at me with much more caring eyes than someone who just shot testicles in a trash can and just laughed, <laughs> just chuckled at me. And he said something to me. By the looks of it, I removed one of your balls. Uh, yo, imagine saying that to a 12 year old. Now, I don't know why that comment made me realize it, but for some reason it put together that he was trying to make me feel better. I do not know why or how he came to that conclusion that that was what he should have did. But by doing that, it was his way of making things a bit more lighthearted. Like I didn't know malpractice could be so lighthearted, but, but I felt the intention. After we finished, he put his hand on my shoulder. Really wish he should have washed those. And I think about that. He really should have washed those. And then he said, try not to think about it too much. Sometimes we got to do things like this. And they're not easy. He'll be fine anyway. It's for the best. Well, he said that. And I felt his words. Still a little shook, but I felt it. I pulled myself together and we cleaned everything up. And that day went on and I went home. Like it was any other day. Now, Dr. M wasn't that great with words, but I'm pretty sure I got what he was saying. To do this, you have to have some level of emotional detachment, especially with uh, something soft like this. Even if you love animals, you have to separate the action from the thing in order to do good. And it's usually a net positive. And with that very silly example, I could see what he was talking about. Or at least I thought he did. I went another day feeling confident that I could be a vet. Like this is what I wanted to do. Although I need to work on my attachment. If it's just cutting off some drools and throwing it in the trash, I think I could do this. But eventually I learned I was wrong. And I couldn't. There was one situation Dr. M brought me in that would definitely test my ability to handle detachment. One way darker than this. But that's a story for another day. Now, let me tell you about this video sponsor, Raycon. So listen, the folks over at Raycon are disrupting the electronic industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price with all the quality and being low price and yet somehow still good is debatably what this channel is all about. Raycon prioritizes their customer's experience from start to finish, not only in price and the design too. These boys have a sleek, cool look and they don't fly out of your ears when you're trying to work out. I'm looking at you brand. I'm not sure I can mention for legal reasons. When I used to go to the gym, I'd wear wired headphones and one time they got caught up in the weights and I fell on the floor like an idiot. Uh, real story. Uh, Raycon, it's not happening. And they come in a ton of colors with a variety of fits. So you cannot trip and fall in blue. You can not trip and fall in red. You cannot trip and fall in black. This is a very personal vendetta for me, if you can't tell. On top of that, Raycon earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a noise isolating fit. And even better, Raycon has a 45 day free return policy. So dead ass, if you aren't feeling them, uh, you can give them back. Like, ah, hello, like, come on. If you're trying to take a break from the screens, but don't want to feel totally unplugged, Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring your favorite content with you wherever you go. So if you want to support the channel and get yourself some good earbuds, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash Kurt Ritchie to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Once again, that's buyraycon.com forward slash Kurt Ritchie to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thanks again, Raycon. Yo, what's good y'all? It's outro no face Kurt. I have been rushing to get this video out, so I have to do it like this. I am so sorry, but uh, don't believe I don't love y'all. Um, seriously, thank you guys for watching. You can tell I'm slow to get a video out when it, I have no outro and there's no Vivi in it. Uh, I, I want to get her back. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Vivi. You're coming back, I promise. It seems like everyone's enjoying the last series, which I did, the new stuff. Don't worry, we're not done with these videos either. Uh, they're still coming. 
uh i i don't really have much this time around other than thank you uh be sure to check out the last video go to the patreon support your boy um and let me know what else y'all want to see from me uh but that's really all i got yo thank you so much to everyone who's been supporting me since day one these days i really think about it and i appreciate you but uh yeah that's all i got yo much love i'll catch y'all next time peace